This is the zebra longwing, part of the helicornid family and found in parts of North America, Central and South America. We're going to look at the life cycle of the zebra, as well as how to keep and breed them, the setup, the food plants and any other information. The life cycle of the zebra follows the same pattern as most of the butterflies. It starts off with a small yellow egg. These are laid on the tips and tendrils of passiflora plants. After around five to seven days, the eggs will begin to hatch and the tiny caterpillars will begin feeding on the tendrils of the passiflora plant. As the caterpillars grow, they become white with black spines and a white head capsule. The larval stage lasts around 13 to 16 days. One of the easy ways to identify zebra larvae from other species such as postmen is by looking at the head capsules. The heads of the postman larvae are a pale orange, whereas the zebras are totally white. After two weeks, the larvae will turn a rusty colour. It will find a place to pupate and hang down in a J shape. After a day or so, it will shed its skin for the final time and become a pupae. After around 10 days, the pupae will colour up and out will emerge the butterfly. Male zebra butterflies are attracted to the female pupae. You will often see them mating with the females as they emerge from the pupae. This is known as pupal mating. If mating doesn't happen on emergence, it will usually happen a few days later. A day or so after mating, the female will begin laying her eggs and the cycle continues. Zebras aren't fussy when it comes to their larval food plants. They will feed on a wide selection of Passifloras. The easiest one to use is Passiflora cerulea, but if you can get hold of Passiflora biflora or Passiflora morifolia, they will prefer these to cerulea. One of the unusual traits of the zebra is that at night the butterflies roost communally. So now let's say you want to try keeping these butterflies yourself. What kind of setup is required? Well, the best thing to use is a polytunnel or greenhouse, which is ideally six foot by six foot or two meters by two meters. It's best to plant one side of the greenhouse with passiflora vines and the other side with nectar plants for the butterflies. Some kind of heating system will be required. Usually an electric fan heater works quite well. And you will also probably have to insulate the greenhouse Otherwise, the heating will cost quite a lot. The ideal daytime temperature for the adult butterflies is between 22 and 28 degrees C, and a nighttime temperature of between 10 and 15 degrees. In terms of humidity, you need between 60 and 80 percent. Zebras are part of the helicornid family, and many of the butterflies from this family use pollen as well as nectar. Adults that have fed on pollen can live anything up to three months, whereas without pollen, it's more likely to be three weeks. So you need to make sure that you provide flowers with a reasonable amount of pollen. This can be in the form of lantana, pentas, stachytaphyta, or if you're using cut flowers, buddleia and honeysuckle work pretty well. They will occasionally visit fruit to feed, such as banana, you can also use a sugar solution, which is made up of 10% sugar and 90% water. In this kind of setup, the zebra should breed quite easily. Full details on setting up a flight area will be included in a future video. So you want to get hold of some zebra butterflies, where can you get them from? They're generally available in pupae from London Pupae Supplies and Stratford Butterfly Farm. You can also probably obtain larvae and eggs from Stewart's Butterflies or my own website tropicalbutterflies.co.uk If you have any further questions about the zebra, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll see you in another video.